I'm thinking I'm back. John Wick style. Life update at the end. Let's talk about some things you as a first time home buyer are going to miss when touring a property. Because here's the thing, the tour starts before you get in the house. So when I hop out the car, I'm looking up and down the street just to get an idea of the vibe of the neighborhood. And then just talk about the house itself. So what I'm doing, I'm on the porch. I'm looking at, hey, is, is the is the front door kept up? Is the paint peeling? If it's wood on there, is the ceiling looking good? Uh, is the porch swept? I'm looking at the, and I critique this very hard. I'm looking at like the front yard, like how's it maintained? We're, we're at my house right now, you can get a quick peek. But I'm looking at like the the bushes and things like that. Like what does it look like? Are there a bunch of weeds and the flower bed? Now the bushes don't need to be at like a, a 90 degree angle, but I want to see some sort of upkeep, especially because the house is on the market. Literally stepping out that car and looking at the uh, property is the first impression. If they don't care about the first impression, hopping out the car, like what's really going on inside the house and amongst things that they can hide. Also, I'm looking left and I'm looking right to see what's going on with the neighbors because neighbors could potentially like ruin the house. You can have the house of your dreams, but if you have neighbors that are a little, um, whatever is not whatever is not to your liking, that could be an issue as well. So I'm doing kind of the same critique of the front yard of the neighbors. Do they got crap in the front yard? Do they got junk? Is the um, lawn a little bit too high? I'm doing all that to assess the uh, ins and outs of the neighborhood, but uh, let's go inside. Oh, and also like I'm looking up and down the street, right? Like a thing I don't like is a bunch of cars on the street. That's just that's just kind of like a uh, what did the kids say a ick for me. But uh, let's go on the side and uh, check out a little more of the tour. <laughs> hey, still not inside the house yet. So one thing you want to look for is a gradient. So you can see behind me from the podcast. I'm in my backyard. I'm looking at the side of my house, and you can see there's a a negative gradient, meaning that the ground is sloping away from the property. And this is very important because when it rains that rain water has to go somewhere you see you want it going away from your property if the gradient is flat or if it's sloped towards your property what happens is that water starts to pull next to your house and goes down into your foundation and what this can do is shift the foundation which is a a bad thing and so that can be like tens and thousands of uh, dollars of damage in the future. So you always want to look for that negative gradient in the property. So speaking of rain, right behind me, you can see gutters. Often new houses, especially like new construction houses, like at the bottom of the market in whatever your local jurisdiction is, they don't have gutters. That's one thing I've noticed as well. So you want to make sure you have those gutters up there because once again, um, when the water hits your house, that has to go somewhere. So if you don't have gutters, that water is going to go right down to that foundation, whether you have the proper um, gradient on your property or not. So you can see these gutters right here, they actually don't come out onto the ground anywhere. They actually go under the property because as you can kind of see over here, where we look, um, uh, we got to see there's there's water starting to pool um, between the uh, between the houses. <laughs> Hopefully we get a better angle for you. There's water starting to pool between the houses. And so if you don't have something to um, uh, get the water away from your property. Still, the water can still pull in between the houses and may cause an issue. So, um, what's between the two houses is what's called a a French drain. That's basically an underwater drain that shoots all the water out, like directly into the uh, sewer system. And so, we're still in my uh, property um, right now. So you're gonna see I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm doing this walk thing for a reason. And so, right now, you can see that there is a tree in the um, backyard. So you want to make sure this tree is an appropriate distance away from the property. So if that tree is like right up on the um, property, even though you may not see any issues, what can happen is like these trees have, have big roots. And so um, you can kind of see um, right here. So we're, what, about five foot away from the tree? And you can kind of see there's a root popping out the ground right there. That's a pretty big root. So um, these roots are going um, way, way, way further than you can actually um, see. And they get under the foundation and they can mess up the foundation or they can get into the, the plumbing because roots gonna go where the water is, you know, the trees, the whole thing is, you know, they live and bring life. And so um, I've seen some horrible pictures where like roots get into the, uh, the plumbing systems. Also, when you're doing a, um, a home inspection, um, you may wanna think about getting like a, um, um, a sewer, sewer skew, I can't remember the word right now, no editing in this video. Um, and uh, 
uh, make sure that all the, the plumbing is, uh, is good, especially in older properties. In newer properties, um, they're not going to have time for the roots to go uh, and mess up the, uh, the property. So uh, make sure the um, if there are trees on the property, they aren't too close to uh, the house. And if they are too close to the house, uh, make sure you're checking them out. And also what they can lead to is um, if they're too close to the house, like the leaves will fall on the roof. And then the even if you have gutters, uh, the gutters can be clogged. And once again, they can cause issue um, with the uh, foundation because if the clutter, if the gutters are clogged, it doesn't matter that you have them, the, the water is going to run over the uh, side of the house. So here's the next thing I'm looking at as well for uh, the, uh, the property here. So um, I'm looking at the, uh, the foundation, right? And so I'm looking at these um, corners um, right here. So this one here is called like a, a corner, corner pop. So when new homes, like they're going to naturally settle in like the foundation, um, sometimes we have, have cracks right there. And so um, um, you're like, hey, should, should I get that inspected? I'm not a mechanical engineer, so I can't tell you to not or not get inspected, but uh, typically this is not a, a big issue um, right here. But what you want to look at next is you want to look uh, along like the, the windows, right? And so we're looking at the windows and we're looking at, hey, are there any cracks up along the windows? So if you see those, those uh, issues right there, and also looking along the windows, and you see like uh, cracks and stuff like that. So that's a, a indication that the foundation um, may be shifting because the windows are a good point to check this out. So you want to check this out on the outside and the uh, inside of the uh, property. I'm a realtor in Dallas and would love to help you reach your goals of home ownership. So click the link in the description and just schedule a call no matter where you are on your journey. Not in Dallas, no worries. I can help connect you with a vetted realtor in your local jurisdiction as well. And feel free to share with friends, family, and foes. Everyone gets left. And so you want to look at around the corners at various parts of the way. You kind of see there's a, um, uh, what do you call this thing? A sprinkler system uh, embedded in the property. So if you do decide to actually um, purchase the property, you want to actually make sure this sprinkler system uh, works and, and all that works because just having it to have it doesn't really accomplish anything for you. And then too, like I'm, I'm nosy, right? This is the biggest financial decision, excuse me, uh, of my life. Once again, no edits. I'm going to peer over the fence and see what's going on in the neighbor's yard. Like it just kind of, kind of is what it is. And so if I see a bunch of uh, craft in the yard, um, or maybe I see a bunch of like kid stuff in the yard, maybe I'm, I don't want to live near um, a, a potentially loud family. Maybe petty, but once again, this is the most important financial decision of your life. Do what you need to do in order to feel comfortable because um, a horrible regret you don't want to have is like, hey, I, I bought my dream home. I love everything about this property, but I hate the neighbors. So like I can look over the, the fences and actually I'm not going to show it just because, you know, privacy, but I can look over the fence and see like, uh, and I just noticed this, like two neighbors over, they have like a, um, a big a big gardening thing so I'm, I'm a huge uh uh gardener actually i'm gonna show you my my garden uh right here so that to me that's a, a huge perk it's like oh i love gardening so my neighbors love gardening and so you can kind of see i got the tomatoes popping off uh right there got a uh, brussels sprouts the kid of me would be ashamed of myself uh, we got uh goji berries this plant's just growing we got some cement over right there but let's uh let's probably go inside the house in my wife's office right now and so um you know, a lot of times with uh, ladies and women, they'll have uh, like candles and stuff in, in their property. Now they like to, to, to smell good, which is great. But here's the thing. If those candles are, are lit while the tour is going on, or there's a bunch of like uh, air fresheners and stuff plugged in, to me, that's a potential red flag because what potentially are these people uh, hiding? Like, is there like a, do they have pets? Like, is there, or is there a bunch of like urine um, that they can't necessarily get up in this room so they're trying to uh block out the smell with a candle um are they smokers or somebody smoking the property and they're trying to block out the smell of smoke so candles especially with their lit and their people aren't in the property because that's like pretty dangerous or there's like an abundance of like um of those little plug-in things going on that is potentially a red flag so you want to kind of do your due diligence and do some sniffing around uh literally sniffing around in the property to make sure there aren't any unpleasant smells that may not be revealed until it's a little bit too late in the property because like urine and um is very very hard pet urine or just people urine is very very hard to get out of property and uh same thing with like smoke it's like very expensive to uh eliminate the smell of smoke in a property i guess we can stay in this uh, room but another thing once again we're looking for like cracks in the corners of the ceilings to see if there's any sort of foundation shift we're going back inside the property and we're looking for like 
potential, you know, cracks on the, in the uh, windows and areas like this. So there's a little bit of separation um, right here, but that's more has to do with like um, caulking. And so uh, when you're when you're seeing these cracks, like the cracks will be like will be like jetting out from the the sides of the the windows uh, themselves typically but once again i'm not a structural engineer so if you have questions consult a structural engineer if your realtor does not say that uh they're probably down bad because your realtor is probably is not a structural engineer uh either but let's keep going so next what i'm going to do is i'm looking down at the the baseboards down there and so um we're looking for any like water damage or potential like standing water. This is probably more a bigger thing in a, a older home or a home that has um that's like near a body of water. Oh, and one thing I didn't um, point out when we were in the backyard is you want to make sure there's no like standing water in the backyard because if it had just rained, especially if it wasn't a huge rain and there's standing water in the backyard, think about like a huge big rain. That's a potential for like flooding in the property and you know water to get um order to get in where you are and potentially like uh, damage baseboards and create uh, mold and uh, unsavory things in the property. Next, I'm just kind of checking out the tile work, right? I'm saying, seeing does the tile work look professionally done? Because if the tile work is kind of shabby or there's kind of like spot uh, maintenance here and there, think about the other like spot maintenance that be done that may be done throughout the the property right so um once again if the stuff that's very visible is bad think about all the stuff that may be hidden so i'm like okay the um house you don't want to look at how old the house is but it looks like it's relatively well maintained and speaking of being relatively well maintained you also want to go look through house that stuff like the um the hvac system the hot water heater you want to see if it's there's scheduled maintenance on it because when a professional comes through and does maintenance on the property they will actually like uh put um, like their information and like the last time it was maintained because they want to be contacted again, right? So they're like, hey, um, maintenance was done. You're thinking, hey, maintenance was done a year ago. Who did the maintenance there? They're probably going to shoot you an email or something like that. But you go up to the um, the hot water heater and say, hey, you know, uh, Smith's uh, Plumbing, they did this a year ago. Here's their phone number. Let me reach out to them. So make sure you're checking for actual maintenance on like the big ticket items uh, maintenance wise in the property as well also don't be afraid to turn on appliances and make sure that they work i just had some eggs this morning right there but i make sure the stuff's work you want to run appliances you want to turn on the water and make sure the hot water works in the property next if you got a, a cute pupster like i do especially if they're hardwood floors you want to make sure you're examining those hardwood floors because we all love our puppies but uh what do they do they scratch the floor and so if there's something like a a rug suspiciously around the property make sure you're looking under that rug to uh, um See if there's a bunch of like scratch marks and things of that nature because if there's a dog, there, there's going to be scratch marks on the floor. That just kind of is what it is. So maybe that's something you want to deal with. Maybe that's something you want to um, maybe get a credit for and part of your negotiations. But uh, make sure you're checking for a uh, pet remnants if there's a pet in the property. So obviously the pet hopefully would not be sitting there <laughs> during like the uh, the walkthrough. But you'll see signs of it. You'll see like a a dog food bowl. You'll see like the beer for the dog or whatever animal it is, uh, etc. In that property. Back in my wife's office again. Another thing I want to look for is like windows and oddly shaped windows. Like if this window breaks um, behind me, so if you're listening on the podcast, it's a square window with a uh, a rounding roundage with a with a curved top of the window. If this thing breaks, uh, heaven forbid, that's probably going to be a little expensive to replace. It may even be a custom uh, window as well. One fortunate thing of buying like in a a new build community. Um, these probably these windows probably are made at scale for at least the builder. So maybe you can reach out to the builder and they may know like a connect to get like windows that are um, this shape. But um, you also look for like Mitch, mix match, Mitch match, mixed match windows. Yeah, I think it's mixed matched uh, windows to, uh, to make sure there aren't a bunch of like eyeball windows. Because speaking of this, like let's say um, maybe a window broke and they went to go get it replaced and the window was super expensive or it was maybe out of a, uh, um, they, they stopped making that type of window before. So if there's different types of windows in the property, that may be a sign that there's a big bill coming down the pipe for you because eventually you do have to replace the windows. And if they maybe just got to replace one window, but if you're like, hey, this window isn't made anymore, you may have to like replace all the windows in the property. So that may be a bigger bill than you are expecting. Another thing you want to do in the property is like a, a sound test. So you may want to go upstairs and walk around and have somebody be downstairs and see how loud is it when you walk around upstairs. If it's an older home, there may be a bunch of creaking and things of that nature. You may want to do like a, ah, 
uh, like a, a yell test to see how the soundproofing is in the property. So once again, um, if you're downstairs, what's it sound like upstairs, uh, things of that nature. Also, um, stuff that your, your realtor probably has, you should bring it to. Always kind of like to bring a, um, a tape measure as well because, you know, they'll be like, hey, you know, the rooms are, are 10 by 10. Um, they may be or, not, or may not be, but let's say you got like a... Um, a sofa or something like that. You want to see how the sofa fits in maybe the living room. You want to see how beds and stuff and things of that nature may uh, fit in the uh, bedroom. So uh, that is all I got. If you can think of something I missed that uh, is kind of unexpected, not just dust stuff in the property, or if it's dust stuff, do whatever you want to do. Uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, quick life update. So first video in uh, I think like, or episode, like almost like a month and a half. Um, uh, I've done a video on this before, but um, I have, um, well, I'm, I'm like autistic, right? Not like uh, online, I, you know, self-diagnose myself, but, you know, actually, you know, from talking to a, a doctor. So um, I get, a, I, sometimes I get a lot of like built up anxiety and I just, um, it's just, it's just kind of like, kind of like crippling. And so um, if you follow me on IG, you'll notice I've not probably posted anything in like a, a month and a half uh, as, as well. So um. I think I'm just going to re retire from like um, IG and I'll kind of post these videos here and there. Another thing I hate about doing these videos is I used to do a bunch of editing and, and all that. So all these videos from now on are just going to be me uh, kind of shooting and talking, sometimes walking, sometimes sitting down. But uh, you're not going to get really any, any cool editing if you found the editing cool in the other videos. It's just going to be me. So uh, uh, love it or like it. I guess you like it if you've waited this far to the end of the video. So uh, until next time, I try to do videos once a week, but um. I just got to do them as I feel like it. So as always, my land and rest and not make any more of it. <laughs> All right.